So we are seeing um, an uptick in cases outpatient um, as well as inpatient. So uh, right now approximately 25% or a quarter of our people who are getting tested in outpatient clinics are actually testing positive for COVID. Mm -hmm. And what do you think is driving that? Is it just the emergence of this uh, most recent mutation? Yeah, yeah, the mutations are, you know, they're always changing. There's always going to be a new, a new mutation, um, which is why it is so important to receive this vaccine. And that more than likely is why. You know, I'm curious, you know, we had, we had the original uh, uh, virus Virus, then we have Delta, Omicron, and everything else. Are we seeing pretty much the same symptoms with what is going around right now? Yeah, yeah. So now it's actually seeming to be a little bit more like a common cold. Um, well, that's so, what the coronavirus is. Yeah, well, yeah, it is, it is. But it was, it was a little bit stronger whenever it first came out. So, you know, now we're seeing um, cough, congestion. It presents almost like allergies, almost like a sinus infection at times. Um, so the symptoms really have been about the same, just hopefully progressively getting a little bit weaker. That's, that's our hope at least. Yeah, and what are people kind of advised to do at this point? Because I know the old days, it was the five to seven days and and don't have contact and social distance. Do all of those same kind of rules from a couple years ago apply in your opinion? Yeah, I mean, in my opinion, I believe they do because there are still, you know, patients at risk of having the severe side effects of COVID regardless of if, um, you know, a younger patient that does not have severe side effects has them or not. Um, older patients and our, you know, immunocompromised population, they are still at that risk of developing a severe pneumonia or getting severely sick and having to be hospitalized. Now that, well, the comorbidities, they've always been the most vulnerable. Yeah. So what do you think both uh, Moderna and Pfizer are coming out with the next iteration of their mRNA uh, vaccine? Not available yet at Memorial, though, not right? Not yet, not yet, but soon to come. It is? You've yes, heard sir. that it's in the pipeline and they're it hoping be for happening. it to be there soon. Yes, sir. And what are doctors advising now that we're also in flu season? Do you think mm -hmm. it's okay for people who want to get a flu shot and yet another COVID shot to uh, maybe go ahead and do that at the same time? Absolutely. Yes, sir. There's there's no, you know, contraindications to that that we know of at this point. Um, we haven't really had a lot of patients coming in with severe issues or side effects from flu shots or COVID shots mixed together. We have had that done in the past as well. So um, for now, we're just going to continue to recommend that until we're told otherwise. Well, what about children? I mean, we had that CDC. That, that sounds a little severe to me. Six months. I mean, yeah. Really so young sounds to me, you but. know, I, I agree. And there are a lot of different um, a dif different opinions about that. But I, you know, I firmly believe that if, you know, we cover a, a broader patient age range that will be a lot less likely to see such a, a severe um, uptick in cases and such severe side effects for those those patient populations. You'll Alrighty. cover more people from Memorial Hospital. Uh, uh, Dr. Taylor Brewer. So good to see you, Dr. Brewer. And thanks for being with us on the Four O'Clock Show. Thanks for having me.